Hello, this is Dr. Ford Brewer with state-of-the-art heart attack, stroke, and cancer prevention. Today we're going to talk about haptoglobin. Um, what's haptoglobin? It's a hemoglobinopathy. Well, what's a hemoglobinopathy? It's, well, it's two words, like, like uh, scientists often do, it's two words put together. Hemoglobin, and we'll remind you what hemoglobin was in just a minute, we'll go through some images on it, and uh, apathy, or P-A-T-H-Y means disease or, or a bad hemoglobin <clears throat> cleanup. It's actually a cleanup mechanism. Now, <clears throat> what's this got to do with anything? Well, <clears throat> I'll start with a, a slide from my friends uh, Bradley Bale and, and um, Amy Donin. <clears throat> this is an issue for diabetics, especially if you're uh, diabetic. If your hemoglobin A1C is uh, over 6.5, um, <clears throat> a haptoglobin uh, 2 increases risk for heart attack and stroke for diabetics. Someone with haptoglobin 2.2 2 has five times the risk, whereas uh, haptoglobin 1.2 is three times more likely than, some, than a diabetic with haptoglobin 1.1 1, 1 to have a heart attack. Well, is there another way to look at that? Yes, there is. There's a thing called life tables. And basically, um, you take a large population, you go down the uh, experience in terms of life tables or event risk. This is a diabetic group that had HAP2 or has HAP22. And every time one of them has a heart attack or stroke, you drop, the line drops again. So as you can see, they're at much greater risk than diabetics with HAP11, and the HAP, uh, HAP12 have a medium risk. So again, this helps us understand a little bit about um, the risk associated for diabetics with haptoglobin 1-2 and 2-2, the number 2 um, allele or SNP or uh, mutation. It's not really a mutation, but that's maybe the easiest way to remember it. <clears throat> so, what is haptoglobin? Actually, hap let's go back and remember what hemoglobin is first. Hemoglobin is the um, protein that holds the heme molecule. Heme holds iron. So let's take a look at that image. This is the heme molecule with the iron in the middle of it, and this is hemoglobin with heme molecules within it. Now, you remember what hemoglobin is for. It holds oxygen. So what actually happens is when we breathe, uh, the red part of our blood is red because it's oxygenated. This iron in the middle of this uh, molecule gets oxygenated. It carries that oxygen to the cells, and the cells use it, as you know, to, re to make respiration or to create energy. And, as you know, we can't live without oxygen for very long. Uh, before we look at that, let's look at a, um, another explanation of what haptoglobin is. We just talked about hemoglobin. Um, Here's another view of hemoglobin, another image, and be patient with me in terms of the images. I think it's far better to take a little bit of this uh, confusion and bouncing around with images to help understand what's going on. So this is the hemoglobin molecule. It's located within the red blood cell. The red blood cell uh, bursts, and if it bursts, then it spills that out, and they burst all the time. So here is a diagram showing that process. You've got a red blood cell, it bursts, you've got hemoglobin out flowing free, and it's a lot of it's oxidized. This is where haptoglobin comes in. Haptoglobin comes in, picks up that hemoglobin, and takes it to be metabolized and rebuilt into new hemoglobin. Well, what are these? these? This is a HAP1-2 configuration and a HAP2-2, haptoglobin 2-2. Two, 
two configuration. So remember, the folks with this have high, five times the risk if they're diabetic than uh, diabetics with haptoglobin 1-1. One, one. These are hap 1-2 or 2-1, and they have three times the risk of uh, hap 1-1. One, one. Here's why. These configurations don't hold on to and transport that hemoglobin molecule very well. So again, a little uh, basic molecular science 101. Here's another uh, view of those, uh, those molecular structures. Here's HAP11. Uh, these diabetics don't have that much increased risk. These have three times the risk these do. And these, HAP22, have five times the risk of these and three times the risk of those. So the bottom line is haptoglobin is not good. But it's very prevalent in the U.S. population. Allele frequencies between a third and, uh, and a half. Which means a lot of people have it. Now, <clears throat> um, we used to not know that much about HAP22. This will give us some perspective on haptoglobin. We've already begun to map it. There's a lot of information we understand about it now, including that it creates zonulin. I'll, zonulin is the precursor molecule for haptoglobin 2,2. I'll talk about that in just a few minutes. <clears throat> but why is it bad to have that uh, oxygenated um, hemoglobin floating around the bloodstream for diabetics? Well, if, you're, if you work with metals uh, or, or a mechanic, you may remember that there's another word for oxygenation, and it's called rust. So rust, or oxygenation, lying around in the artery walls is a uh, major source of inflammation. What do we do about it? Well, remember, if this is a major concern for diabetics. It's not so much a concern for those of us who are not diabetic. That part's not quite understood, uh, why that's not quite understood. But there's a couple of other things to remember about it. Number one, if you have tight control of your diabetes, six, uh, a hemoglobin A1C of six or less, you uh, greatly improve your uh, reaction or your health. The other thing is, there's a simple over-the-counter you can take, vitamin E. So diabetics with haptoglobin 2-2 should take 400 international units of vitamin E. And look what it does to the life chart, the life curve. It takes it from way down here, back up very close to HAP11 and HAP12 diabetics. So that's haptoglobin. Um, a historical comment. <clears throat> The haptoglobin, and haptoglobin 2 is, call, is called a hemoglobinopathy. Um, there are uh, other hemoglobinopathies, such as beta thalassemia and uh, sickle cell. Now, those are, are fairly prevalent as well. Why are they so prevalent? They do appear to um, protect from inf certain infectious diseases, such as malaria. You may or may not know, malaria uh, has a lot to do with uh, the red blood cells. Uh, famous people that have had hemoglobinopathies, Pete Sampras, a, um, one, one of the baby boomer generation's uh, idols of tennis, had uh, beta thalassemia. There were, he was not known for being in good condition. Uh, some people mistakenly thought that was because he didn't train that much. The reality was he had problems. Um, uh, transporting oxygen and keeping that mechanism well. In fact, there were a few times in big matches where he was, uh, he stopped, he had, he had vomiting, he had to have an IV. Again, <clears throat> hemoglobinopathies are there. You just got to know what to look for. The biggest, most prevalent problem that we have right now, though, is haptoglobin 2-2 with diabetics.